In this video we are going to take a closer look at the highest ranked death watch unit available on the tabletop, the Watchmaster. Having a long history of being overshadowed by Smash, Slash and Biker Captains in the death watch, has the time of the Watchmaster now finally come? In order to answer this, we will first take a look at his datasheet, abilities and war gear. Then we will also take a look at some of his greatest competitors before going through how to specifically make use of him in a Deathwatch army these days. Lastly, there will be some modeling recommendations and a quick wrap up. Welcome to Swiss Hammer, your channel for modeling in Warhammer 40k. My name is Tamer and I will be guiding you through this video. Before we dive right into his status sheet, a quick word on why the Watchmaster is a little special. In a regular Space Marine chapter, a captain can be upgraded to a chapter master through the chapter command upgrade at 40 points. In the Death Watch, this upgrade option is unavailable, instead the Watchmaster is basically the chapter master equivalent and therefore his total points cost reflects the 40 points upgrade that other chapters have to get separately. Speaking of points, Looking at his data sheet, he is now praised at 130 points, which puts him 5 points above the cheapest firstborn captain without any special war gear. Compared to that mentioned firstborn captain, the Watchmaster gains an additional wound, a 2 plus armor save, as well as his Witcher Spear, making him very decently priced. The 2 plus armor save in particular cannot be pointed out enough. Basically, when they changed Storm Shields in 9th edition to have a 4 plus invul only, instead of the 3 plus they had before, and added the extra armor instead, they created redundancy on captains due to their built in Iron Halo ability, meaning they only benefit from the increased armor save which the Watchmaster already has. The big downside, of course, compared to the regular captains, is that the Watchmaster comes with a fixed loadout and therefore cannot make use of all the neat weapon upgrades available to the regular captains, to which we will come in just a moment. For abilities, next to the rights of Battle Captain Aura, he also has the Chapter Master full rerolls equivalent, which is one of the big selling points as far as I'm concerned. Furthermore, he has access to two unique stratagems. One is Adaptive Tactics for 2CP, allowing him to change the battlefield role selected for the purposes of the Xenos Hunters chapter tactics for your army once per game. The second is Clavis for 1CP, which can be used at the start of the fight phase on an enemy vehicle within one inch of the Watchmaster, which results in D3 mortal wounds and the unit fighting loss. Last but not least, the Watchmaster also has access to two unique relics, the Osseus Key as well as the Spear of the First Witchill, though I think with all the great relics already available to the Death Watch, these two see little competitive play. All in all, this guy is pretty amazing, so why did he not see all that much play until recently? The answer is of course because of his inflexible loadout. Up until the introduction of the Armor of Contempt rule for power armored factions, taking the Dominus Siege's relic of the Death Watch for the 5 plus invul bubble was pretty much considered to be an auto include, but of course the Watchmaster has no shield and therefore cannot take the relic. For more information on the Armor of Contempt and what it means for the Death Watch, feel free to check out my video linked in the description. In short, if you want to take both a Watchmaster and the Dominus Aegis Relic, it requires taking an extra character, like the Company Champion or the Indomitus Lieutenant, resulting in a lot of extra points for something that could be solved with a Captain instead. Speaking of which, the biker captain with his T5 was pretty popular as a cheap and fast Dominus Siege's carrier with a big base, or sometimes competitive lists would run a Xenophay slash captain, though personally I always thought that these more fighty characters were ill suited for the relic as they wanted to be in the thick of things rather than babysitting the big kill teams. But anyway, with the addition of Armor of Contempt, the biggest downside of the Watchmaster has been removed and as a result we are seeing him pop up more in successful competitive lists. 
Perhaps one disadvantage he still has is his mobility, when compared to a biker or chumpak captain, but you can advance him as I think his main benefits are the rerolls. Having said all that, how can we best use him in the Death Watch? Similar to the previously mentioned biker captain, I would recommend keeping him primarily as a buffing character for one or several big kill teams, such as a full blob of Indomitor or Forest kill team with Assault Hellblasters. In the Army of Renown in particular, getting both Chapter Master rerolls and wide access to wound rerolls, and not to mention Specialism Extremis, can be pretty devastating for your opponents. While the Watchmaster can get some extra mobility out of advancing him, I would still leave the Beacon and Chalice Relic to the more mobile biker Chaplin. On the bright side of things, the Watchmaster is a firstborn, so technically he could board the Corvus Blackstar, though as I said before, I think I would just leave him with the big primary skill team blobs. Beyond that, I think that both his stratagems are worth considering. In my opinion, adaptive tactics in particular will become more interesting with the upcoming chapter approved CP changes, basically halving the CP you start with, but you gain more each round, giving a boost to later battle rounds, at which point it might be more appealing to change the battlefield role for Xenos Hunters. Clavis, on the other hand, strikes me as a bit situational, as it is very short range and only works against vehicles, but it is good to keep this one in mind because the Army of Renown in particular lacks access to fight last outside of a Judicia, which most competitive lists don't take due to points constraints. But even in a regular army list, whirlwinds have become less appealing due to the nerfs to indirect fire in the most recent balanced status late. All in all, I think the balanced status slate and armor of contempt have turned the Watchmaster into a highly competitive pick again, and I absolutely recommend taking him if points allow. Especially in the Army of Renown, points remain super tight due to mandatory specialisms, and perhaps a future update will address this, at which point I would consider him pretty much an auto-include. Until then, I think it is sort of a tie between him and one of the previously mentioned captains, depending on the points spent on the kill teams and or other characters. With that being said, let's have a look at some modeling recommendations. But Tamer, the guy has a single loadout and no customization options? Well yes, but we are the Death Watch, and for me personally, one of my biggest regrets is not having customized my Watchmaster more. While I have a dislike for unhelmeted space marines, no small thanks to reading the Horus Heresy books, I suppose, slapping on a helmet is basically all I did, and now I always feel like he's falling short of being that chapter master equivalent. Over the recent months, I have seen a great many fantastic conversions, and what I always liked the most were the dynamic poses, and giving him a more imposing spear, such as one from the Custodian Guards. Then lastly, there's of course the matter of the paragon of their chapter warlord trait, and the completely unnecessary fluffy paragraph about having to represent the correct chapter. Look guys, this has never been an issue for me personally, but if I were to redo my Watchmaster, I would not give him a recognizable chapter heraldry, simply to keep my options open. To wrap things up, over the course of the video, we have looked at the Watchmaster and what challenges he faced in the Death Watch prior to the Armor of Contempt rule. Counting as the Chapter Master equivalent and without the option to upgrade a Captain, the Watchmaster was often overlooked because he could not carry the popular Dominus Aetris relic. With the latest balance status late having changed that, I think now is the perfect time for his return into competitive play. With an extra wound and a 2 plus armor save, he is not only very nicely priced over a firstborn captain, but it is also our only way to get access to the chapter master full hit rerolls. Out of his two unique stratagems, I like adaptive tactics a lot better now that the upcoming chapter approved will change CP distribution, and the more situation Clavis stratagem is at least one way for the army of renown to get access to a fight last outside of the Judicier. The way I would play him though is mostly in support of the big kill teams, such as the Indomitor or the Fortis one with Assault Hellblasters. As a side note, if you do want to take him for a ride, he can indeed board the Chorus Blackstar. 
Then lastly, while the default model has no big customization options, I think this is one of those cases where I think that kit bashing wins over just buying the default one. At least I wish I had been more creative when building mine. So that's it for the Watchmaster in the Death Watch. Have you guys changed back to running him now that we have the Armor of Contempt rule? Or are you still sticking to a captain instead? Let me know in the comments. Finally, I would also like to mention that there is a Swiss Hammer Facebook page where I will be posting links to my videos as well as articles I find of interest. I do read a lot about the hobby, but not all of it will always end up as its own video. I look forward to seeing you there as well. I do also have a Patreon page. If you like my content, any additional support is greatly appreciated as it helps me invest into future videos. As always, thank you very much for watching guys, your continued support is greatly appreciated. I hope you have been enjoying this video, give me a thumbs up if you did and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thanks again and see you next time.